fabulous prize. We'll do that uh, when, when Gib is done with his part of the talk. Did you want to talk about uh, Dell buying EMC? Yeah, Dell just announced yesterday they're buying EMC for $67 billion. Billion dollars, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. What are they going to do with it? Uh, the, the VM stuff, the, the virtual stuff out of them they wanted. Uh, what does that do to Dell's other solution system? Stuff? Well, they they got to be part of it. Everything's going virtual. It's okay. I'll we'll find another. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, it's a big deal. I don't know. I, I'm thinking Dell's still in business? <laughs> Where did they get $67 billion? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Michael Dell has a lot of money. All right, so we still have, uh, I think we still have some cookies and stuff over there. So if you're hungry, grab a cookie, put a dollar in the jar, grab a pop. Um, I think we want to, are you pop ready? Good. Quick changeover. All right, let me, uh, let me announce that we have uh, Gibson Nichols. He's going to be talking about uh, Amazon Web Services. Uh, so, uh, I've been looking forward to this one. This should be really good. So, have at it, Gib. Hi, I'm Gib. I'm a computer addict. <laughs> Hi, Gib. So, I've been working with Linux uh, since the Drizzle days in 1991. I built my first uh, computer in 1977. The other month, uh, I was talking to Jim about you know options for coming up with presentations and stuff, and I've been a member for a long, long time, uh, and you know really want to give back a little bit. So uh, I mentioned to him that you know at work uh, they sort of thrust this uh, Amazon AWS uh, thing on me and said you're responsible for this environment now. So I've been uh, sort of supporting this for a little bit, and I, I told everybody that I don't know much about it. You know, it's, it's kind of new to me. I, I maybe learn a little bit as we go along, and so we're hoping that I've learned enough to, you know, do a presentation. So I was, I was offering to do a 15-minute presentation, right? So I, I thought, okay, I'll demo how to create an instance in uh, Amazon AWS. So Amazon AWS, for those that, you know, who have been living under a rock or whatever, uh, <laughs> is a service provided by Amazon. You know Amazon, that, that retailer that sells all kinds of stuff, and you know, does a really good job about that. Uh, they, you know, looking for other types of work to do. And one of the things they, they found is because they were building up this big data center and stuff to do their retail sales, that they had expertise in that. And uh, so, you know, they decided, hey, we're going to, you know, provide services to other companies so that we would run the hardware, and then you don't have to do any of that. You could just, you know, request uh, services from us. And basically, they they've been building this thing out for a while, and they just keep pouring more and more stuff into it. It's just amazing the, the number of uh, services, and they have more coming out all the time. So for example, uh, the third, uh, third, third column on the top here, this AWS uh, IoT. So uh, Internet of Things, that's a buzzword that's becoming real popular nowadays. So they come up with, and it's funny, when they do this, they, they seem to come up with their own own names for stuff. You know, they don't use the typical names. So I was real surprised and all about brand that IoT was called IoT instead of some fancy name that they could brand. You know. So they call a thing an instance instead of a virtual machine and things like that. So you, know, you have to sort of learn the dictionary as we go along. So as you can see, there's a lot of stuff in the columns here. And some of this, you know, I've been working on this for like you know three months now, and I, I only know a few of them. You know. So the one thing that I'll probably show you real closely here is the EC2. So this is the place where you actually can request an instance and get one running. And so you're basically running a computer that's out on the cloud. So someone said, well, cloud, that just means someone else owns the computer. And yeah, okay, but you're getting a lot of services for that. You're getting a lot of things that you don't have to do that they can do for you. Uh, there's you know, all kinds of other services. Uh, and you can see there's like a little description, like a one-line description of things. You know, Elastic Beanstalk is uh, you know, managing web apps. And uh, this Lambda is, uh, so it was funny. Came up, oh, we got this new service. It's for scripting whenever you get some uh, action item that happens. So it's like a... Well, gee, we've been doing that on all the other computers I've known for you know decades now. So some file arrives, and now there's an event that you can then act on, and there's a script you can run. So this is a big thing for them. But you know, of course, we've all been doing that. Uh, S3, for example, is their storage in the cloud. So that's just basically saying disk space. You know, so it's a simple storage. Okay, simple storage. SS, and then I'll note the other one. S is what. 
Then they have you know, a bunch of other things here. Uh, so they have these things called elastic. Instead of calling it like an IP address, uh, a static IP, they call it elastic IP. And I think probably the one thing I'm cautioning everybody about when you're getting into this, if you want to start up an instance, is this is the one key thing I'd, I'd let you, you walk away with just one thing. Remember this, that when you start up an instance, it gets an IP address, right? It gets a name, IP address, like you know, all computers, right? So now you can address that and connect up to it. When you shut down that instance, that IP address goes away. So you start it up again, you get a different IP address. So that IP address you got the first time, somebody else gets that. So if, if you write documentation or procedures or anything, say, here, connect to this IP address, you know, and when this has happened, we've had someone say, gee, I can't get to my instance. Well, and that's, that's really bad, it's, it's a harmful thing. But the, one of the tricky things was, where I work, you have to register IP addresses that you want to connect out to, right? And it was like a new thing that we had just implemented. And so now you had these IP addresses that were being registered so that, you know, we'd have good IP addresses that people had, you know, signed up for, well, that were being sent to someone else. And now it could be someone who's bad who gets that IP address and it's already registered as a good IP address, right? So a couple little things about, you know, making sure that your IP address isn't something that you bake into all your processes and stuff like that. Instead, you could purchase a service from Amazon called an Elastic IP. That's what their static IP is address. So now you pay a little bit each month and you get the use of an IP address that stays the same all the time. But you have to pay for that, okay? So that's the one thing that, you know, caution you to be aware of. Now they've done all kinds of other services here. They have a, you know, their own database uh, system and uh, they allow basically a, something called Glacier, which is uh, like long-term storage. You want to do like a backup. You're not going to you know, try to retrieve that information. You don't need it very often. It's not something you want right away. So if you can live with throwing data somewhere, leaving it there for a long while, and not retrieving it, and if you do need it, you can wait a day to get it, then Glacier is a really cheap place to store data. I think it's like one cent per gigabyte per month. So, you know, good off-site storage kind of thing. If you can accept the premise that storing data on a cloud environment is okay. Uh, we just had a big discussion about, uh, you know, the legal implications of this, and one of the things was what, what the lawyers call discovery. Right? So this is one of the things that's inhibiting a lot of people using cloud <laughs> services is you have a situation where if, a, if a, someone comes after you in a, in a legal sense and says, you have to provide all the data to us, well, what do you tell them? Well, I got this IP address. <laughs> well, so that's not going to work too well, right? Um, so you have to be aware that you know, discovery is an issue for the cloud service. Now, of course, Amazon is quick to say that they have banks running their businesses on Amazon. Um, so after I you know, offered to come and do this presentation, um, my company sent me to uh, the Amazon uh, Summit in Chicago. So I spent like two days looking at all this stuff for you know, several hours to do all these presentations and good stuff. So I have my 10 page description of that, uh, that event that I've written up. So you know, it may last a little more than 15 minutes. So let me start off by um, indicating that, you know, again, there's a lot of other services. I didn't even get to, like, direct connect. So at one point, I was talking to someone at the summit saying, well, we have a lot of data we want to transfer. Um, do you have any services that would help us with that? And I said, well, how much data? I said, well, oh, about four petabytes a day. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, okay. At 50 sites. <laughs> they said, well, go over to that table over there. <laughs> there was, there's a service uh, called uh, Direct Connect, and Direct Connect is basically another company that they purchase or they, they work with that goes around and drops fiber in the companies, and they then do the backhaul for sending large data. And so Direct Connect is the Amazon you know, name for connecting up high-speed connections. And then uh, Route 53 is for like DNS and stuff like that. So here's the, the main thing you want to get into is ECS2. Uh, this is a fairly simple environment uh, because I haven't really built a lot of things. Uh, but professional, this is my personal environment. But professional one, there's a, a few other things uh, involved. Uh, so we have the key things to understand here is the number of instances that you're running. So you can see I'm running one instance. I just fired it up just a little while ago. I have a few uh, instances that I've created out there. And the way Amazon runs this is 
when you're running an instance, it's actually consuming CPU, you're charged for that. If you want to shut it down, then you don't get charged for it. Okay, so if there's a big incentive to just shut everything down all the time. All right, so I don't run stuff very often. I just fire it up when I need it. Um, and there's a you know, whole uh, rigmarole about, well, what other services can you get? So like data transfers and stuff like that, you have certain limits and then you, you're charged for it. There's limits on like the Elastic IP. There's also you know, things you can set up like uh, virtual private networks and things like that. Uh, and there's a whole, this is all virtual, right? So it's really cool that you can set up your own virtual network, your own configuring uh, environment, and then you know, isolate that from another environment or set up your own private connection that nobody else can see between different environments. Uh, they have this whole thing set up with uh, different physical locations. So they have one in Virginia, they have one here, they have one there. So you, you know, you, that way you can physically separate things and, and put them in different disaster zones, right? So you don't want to have all your equipment, you know. So like if there's a big company that has all of their computer equipment in Dearborn, right? Now nobody would ever do that, right? <laughs> You know, it'd be kind of silly. You might have one one you know, tragedy that wipes all your computer equipment out. So they have these different zones and places you can put things, and it costs a little bit for each of the different places that you know, things like that. You know, so um, well. But the thing is, that as an individual, you'll be able to go out to Amazon and the web address is aws.amazon.com. The aws, if you don't put the ad in, it'll take you to the retail place, and that doesn't really. You know, so aws.amazon.com. And if you, you want to try this out, you need like a, a year for uh, free services. And you can bring up a, an instance or certain instances that are small instances. They have names for all the different instance sizes and stuff. So there's the small, the extra large, and the, you know, put, put pepperoni on it. I don't you know, these different things. So there's lots of different, you know, things. And they have uh, uh, like E1, E2, and these prefixes on there to tell you things like, well, what happens if you hit the CPU limit on that device? Uh, their newer way of doing that is they'll just charge you more. You know, they'll give you more, but they'll charge. You. The old way they do it is they, they limit it, and they, you know, so people didn't like that because their systems weren't running very fast. And so this is a very fast system, and it's what do they say? It's uh, nine nines of reliability. So everything's redundant and all that good stuff. Um, so let me just uh, attempt to uh, show you. So uh, the first thing you want to do when you're trying this out is you want to go down here to key pairs. And so I have several of these key pairs. Uh, I'm going to do like they do in some of the cooking shows and say, well, here's how we make this cake, and here's what we'll put it in the oven. And oh, by the way, here's what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. <laughs> uh, because it takes a little while. So the key pair, you, you do a generate key pair, and it's a pretty simple thing. You give it a name, hit cl you know, click uh, create, and then you can download uh, a key pair to your PC. All right? So, and I've done that a couple times. I've got some out there. Um, and so there's, there's another way you can do it, and it's a little bit more cumbersome, but it gives you a little bit more control. Use a, a key pair generator. Um, I happen to like um, what I call it, PuttyGen. PuttyGen is a, is a real cool little tool uh, made by the people who do Putty. We all know Putty as a terminal emulation software that's very <coughs> popular. And so it allows you to generate a key pair. And again, I'm not going to do the key cooking thing and say, we well, press the generate and then in this tool, it does thing where you have to move a mouse around, around, around. So it has some randomness that it can use. And then it, it pops out a file, then you name the file. And there's the main thing to remember about generating a key pair in, in Putty Gen is there's going to be a key phrase that you need to put in. You know, A, B, C, D, you know, I love Lucy, or whatever it is, right? You have to remember that. If you forget what that is, when you go to connect up to your instance, it'll request that. If you don't know what it is, it won't connect. And there's no way to get it back. If you don't know what the key phrase is, when you create your gen, or generate your key, you do not get it back. You, that, that instance, you might just destroy it. OK, so uh, I've created a key pair ahead of time. You can see I've got several of them out here. Um, so in, once you have the key pair, you can go up and create an instance. So there's you know, different things that you can see up here to create you know, all kinds of good stuff. So I go to the dashboard, and there's a real easy thing to find called Launch Instance. If I hit that button, it gives me a list of the common types of instances that you can create. There are lots of these. 
this is just a small number of them that are just the common ones that, <coughs> that they seem to offer up. Um, you can see there's a little black box under several of them that says free tier eligible. That's what I was talking about earlier, is you as an individual for a year can get a free instance. Um, so I think that's like uh, 720 hours per month. Um, so I think 720 is like always running. So you get one instance that you can run all the time. Um, but I'd be careful, sometimes you put create something like the static IP, the elastic IP, and it charges you for that. So you might see charges on your account that you didn't expect. Uh, the other thing is like a, a virtual private uh, community kind of thing where you, you set up you know special special uh, VPNs and things like that. Some of those things will, will cost you money. So just be aware that you get free, but then if you do something extra, it'll cost extra. So I usually go down and find a Ubuntu thing. And I'll tell you the reason I do Ubuntu as well, because I'm familiar with it and I like Ubuntu, but then I also know what the user ID is. <laughs> so when you go spin this thing up, there's nothing here that tells you how to connect to this thing. You have to know the user ID and you have to figure out this, this uh, way of connecting with the, the key. And that basically is, is very simple. You just have to remember what that uh, ABC I love you thing is, or I love Lucy or whatever it was. If you don't remember what that key phrase is, of course, again, you have to throw it away. So when I select this, uh, it brings me to a screen that allows me to just you know, kick off uh, the thing by, by a quick, or quick review. And that's, a, you know, all the defaults on that are, are pretty reasonable. I wouldn't have any problem with creating one with, with just the defaults. Uh, so I'll walk you through what some of the things are that it does. But uh, for the most part, it's, it's just a plug and play, you know, click the next button unless you want to do something special. Unless you want to create your own virtual private environment, right? Unless you want to set up a subnet for this thing. Um, you can you know, auto assign public IP addresses. Um, there's IPAM roles, things like that. A lot of wonderful stuff that you can do to make this better. I, I haven't bothered. I mean, I haven't been at this long enough to really understand what would be helpful for me. Um, so I just walked through and you know, walk through the next steps here. So you can add additional size uh, for the disks. Um, and there's also SSD options and things like that. Um, yeah, I haven't really bothered to, to worry about any of that stuff. Um, and uh, there's, you know, like you can encrypt the, the disk drives. And, um, so there's, you know, a tag. So the tag is just basically some label. I understand it's a good idea if you have a lot of different instances to use what they call a, a tag. It just puts a little label out there so that you can understand what things are. So let's say you have a special project and you want to make sure LTSP project 5 is, is something you can find your instance for. You just tag it. Mm -hmm. So security groups, there's a lot of information about security groups and the, the basic concept is you know, basically you have control over how your users are connecting and who they belong what organizations they belong to and things of that nature. Um, the one thing I would take out of this is don't leave this as anywhere. Um, when you put down anywhere, that means anybody can touch that instance. So you want to figure out, you guys know what a citer is? It's like a part of an IP address with a slash and something tells how big the, the area of that. So there's a thing called site. So you put something in there to say, who can get to this thing? So you want to figure out, you know, what community of people will get to this. And so, you know, if you, that's fine if you got a static IP, but if you don't, and that's that's a great point. And uh, you yeah, know, but if they don't have your key pair, they're not going to get to it. You know, it depends on what services you're running. Okay, so you know, in my universe, I have customers that I that are one-to-one -one type of thing. So, you know, in, a, in another environment, maybe there are people all over the world who have to be able to hit your instance, right? So if you're using a web server, maybe the web services, you want to allow anybody to access. Right. Uh, SSH, you might want to lock it down a little better than that, though. Yes. I mean, um, sure. So, you know, the way around that is maybe to, you know, get some other system that you use as your jump box, right? And then use the jump box to get to this thing. And the jump box has a static IP, and then you can really lock down that, that jump box somehow. Uh, so a real easy thing to do here is just use my IP, and it will take your current IP. So I'm at the library, right, and your point is, well, what if you have a, an IP that changes? And so I won't be able to get to the instance later on, right? But you have the ability to go in with your console. That's that thing I was looking at ahead of time. 
and, and, and tweak things. You could go in and create another you know, group and that type of thing. So you have some control outside of the, the actual instance to how that instance is hit and stuff. Sure. So then uh, I'm done. I'm, you know, so you have the, the security group here, right? So this security group might be open to everybody. It might be locked out to a certain you know, uh, address IP uh, list or whatever. And so I'm, I'm ready to launch this thing. And so you go through and basically, does everything look good? You can you know, bring out this, all the details here that you just went over and make sure everything looks good. Um, so at this point now, there's the, the request to match the instance to a, a key pair. So like I said, I, I created one ahead of time, right? It was a fairly straightforward kind of thing. Just make sure you copy the May instance. I have your attention? The time is now 8.30 and the library will be closing in 30 minutes at 9 p.m. Please be advised that the internet connections will shut down approximately 10 minutes before closing. Thank that's, you. That's why I wanted to do my demo before I went through all my slides. Um, so here I, I could go through and say I'm going to choose an existing one and then I can find the one that I created earlier and just you know, launch the instance uh, with that key pair. Uh, now what the launching the instance will do is it'll you know wait a while and kick around and do some fun stuff. Um, and why it's not coming up here, I don't know. Um, uh, there's a checkbox that you acknowledge. Oh, a checkbox. I acknowledge it. You know, I have the key pair. So I just want to make sure that you are uh, you have the key pair and that you understand what that means and, uh, so they're not liable for you losing your, your uh -huh. instance. So now it's, 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 it's launching the instance. That's all it took to create a computer, right? And so I can go and I can watch how it's progressing, right? So right now I've got this other one that was running from before. I've got this one that's pending. You can see the little dialogue going around and around. So you see it's initiating, yeah. all those good things. Now here's the, this is the way to work the council. You click on the instance that you're interested in. It brings up details about that instance. Wow. And you see there's just a few things down here that tells you. Um, and so let me, let me try to move this screen up a little bit more so you can, uh, I'm having trouble with my, my finger is there. So uh, the one thing that I can start with is status check. So status check, I'm waiting for, there's, there's two things that say initiating with a little uh, <coughs> hourglass next to them. Those have to turn green and say, yeah, it looks good. Um, and you can't get to the instance until that's done. So rather than sitting here waiting you know, five minutes for this thing to go up, I'm going to connect to this other guy that I have here. You can see that there's two of two checks. That's the status checking it's doing down here. You see these two? We go from initiating to, yeah, okay, everything looks okay. And then this column status checks will say two of two checks. So this instance was what I created earlier. You can see I've got an IP address here. So the way to connect to that is fairly straightforward. Um, and this is what it looks like after you've connected. So I wanted to show you how to actually connect to it. I'll, I'll show you here. that for now. So I'm taking the IP address and seeing it over here, this 5291. So I'm just going to type that in manually. <coughs> and again, remember that it will change if you shut down the system. Now, the other tricky part, and this is a, a thing about uh, PuTTY that's really weird, is you want to find the place to enter the key file, right? So here you have this SSH. If you click on the words SSH, you get like a, a, a sub-menu, right? Under the sub-menu, you have this thing called off. Now you, you think that, oh, you click on the little plus sign there, and then you'd be something down here, you click on, no, click on off, right? Very kind of not, not intuitive thing. That's just a funny thing. Now you go through here and say, okay, browse. Now I can browse around and try to find my, my files and all that stuff. And you can see I've got a couple of them out there for Do you have to use putty? No, I'm just I'm using an SSH type of environment. Uh, yeah, you could use you any of the tools that, that it's, it's an, in this case it's a Linux. So whatever you're connecting to, whatever it has on it, you know, so you want to do a web browser, you use an HTTP, HTTPS. No, I'm talking about for SSH key no, exchange. Do you have to use a putty key or can you use a regular SSH key? I use SIG when it works, it works fine. Okay. Right. So yeah, uh, if you have Linux, you just run SSH. You can do S SSH, SSH key, key gen. Yeah, you can do directly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can do the generator. You can generate the website. Mm -hmm. Create okay. right there. Yeah, it's all shall we say industry standard 
SSH. Yeah. yeah. Nothing, nothing funny. I thought yeah, I think Putty had a variation. They're standard keys. They're standard keys. You can import them into yeah. Linux and use them in Linux just like that. Yeah, you can generate them in Linux and import them into Putty. Right. It doesn't care. Okay. So I don't really care either. It's pretty much you know, whatever it works, right? Yeah. Right, right. Well, there you go. You so I've, I've connected to my thing. I have to put the. That's the default, default user it creates. So this is the default user ID for Ubuntu. It's right. Ubuntu. And then here, oh, I have to remember the yeah, ABC I Love Lucy thing, yeah. right? So I have to remember this key phrase, otherwise it's not going to work. And there I am. And there you are. So I've created an instance in just a few minutes. Uh, so you know, one of the things we try to show at work is, well, you know, it takes like months to go through the finance and all that stuff to, to get an instance and to make stuff, uh, you know, for a physical device, right? I'm still working on trying to get some hardware that we, you know, we have to get the boss to sign it. Oh, do we have to have this other boss sign it? Yeah, you better have that other boss. Well, you better have the governance group look at this. And, well, what about the security people? And all, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. no, this month we're like an IBM right. instead of HP. <laughs> so this little uh, instance the environment that we have is pretty, <coughs> Pretty easy. It's uh, you know we, we set up a, like it's almost like a credit card type of thing, mm -hmm. right? So when you sign up for this Amazon thing, you have to have a credit card. It won't let you in. And I think I think this is the one that calls you on the phone, and you have to enter in a number that it gives you on the phone. You know, so there's various ways of doing security, and this is a kind of an interesting one. So you have to give it a cell phone or a phone number, and it has to call you back and give you the number, and then you have to type that in. Um, so just a little thing on Putty, just for a second. So Putty and Putty Gen. If you go to your favorite search engine and put in Putty or Putty Gem, it'll be the first thing that comes up. And so the uh, the, the Putty folks are you know, kind of blatantly you know saying, you will see this as the first one on your your, um, your search. Uh, so you look at it, it's like it's a really weird you know you, URL, right? So this whole long thing is yeah. is the URL. And people say, well, why don't you come up with a better URL? Like, they don't have to. You know, if you go read the FAQ for Putty. It is it is wild. They are just like, you know, someone asked them, well, is it ever going to be available on iPhone? I said, no, we don't have one of those. <laughs> they don't have anybody who owns an iPhone, so they're not going to develop on it. Uh, so, you know, it, this is the one and only putty that you really want. You, if you go to, if you do what I did, and did a, do a search on putty, and bring up some other website, and download it and throw it onto your system, there's going to be advertisements and garbage in it, right? Uh, so this is the putty. It's got putty, uh, you know, in this case of Windows, it's got the EXE and that stuff. So um, now let me jump over to my, my uh, so let me, so that part's done. This is the main thing I really wanted to show you is how to, you know, create an instance and, you know, get to it, right? So now you all are, you know, Amazon AWS capable. You can go out there. There's nothing preventing you just putting in a credit card and, you know, basically signing up for a service going into the council and finding all these little bits and things like that and making it happen uh, at, at no cost, right? Um, I do have 10 slides of stuff that came up during my visit to the Chicago here uh, okay. in June. Uh, before you get to that, you, you gave him a credit card just because you have to do that to sign up. Yes. You have, did you say a year of free? Yeah, I think it's a year where you get yeah. to do their And you can stuff. play with uh, some of the smaller end machines? Yes, yeah, so all the like all these get a D1 micro. So a lot of them call. And there's a whole other universe of other stuff going on. So there's vendors who have their package software on the thing that you can then load up. So I did that with, Word per, with uh, uh, WordPress, right? So there's a, you know, a WordPress okay. entity out there that just loaded stuff up, and you can throw it into an environment and have it running in just a few minutes. And at the end of the year, they're going to start dinging your credit card. Well, so you have to be careful about which services you sign up. So then there's going to be, you get this little piece, and then everything else costs money and things like that. There's also, uh, uh, what do you call this? Where you can, you can um, put in, a, 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 you can request funding type of thing or environment where you get CPU time if it goes below a certain cost. So like oh, a, wow. it's like an eBay so like for, for CPU, your CPU use, time, right? Yeah. So right, if you if you could say, okay, I want uh, I want CPUs at uh, ten cents per CPU click. And if the price drops down that far, then you get it. So if you have like some, some big hunk of data that you need to go through, you have a whole lot of processing oh, you want to do, you could just set up your, your instance and say, okay, when the price gets down to this price point, 
start executing. <laughs> and then That's when the neat. price drops, goes up above it, it will kill up. That's pretty neat. Yeah, it's like, you know, voting on what your price plan is. <clears throat> so a very cool thing. So here I am, I'm, I'm a Linux addict, and I'm, I'm using Windows because it's my new laptop, and I'm just having fun playing with it. And so I created a PDF, and I started this thing up, and it's got a lot of stuff. I mean, so uh, let me just start off by saying that Amazon is, you know, it's a wonderful solution. As I say, there's some specific things that you, you want to, you know, understand if you're going to start playing with this. You know, the discovery is an issue for lawyers, and you have problems with it, might overbill you. One of the things my boss is saying is, yeah, but I need to, I need to have a budget. I want to be able to sh stop.